Welcome, everybody. Welcome to beautiful Florida. Okay, what we're doing today is we're in the Everglades Holiday Park, the Florida Everglades. We're going to go check out some alligators and then also possibly get on an airboat tour. So let's go. He's going to do one of two things, and I guarantee you, neither of which is this. He's going to either A, make some huge explosive move to attack me, but that would be out of self-defense. That's him thinking, I'm the threat. Maybe familiar with a television show I had on Animal Planet called Gator Boys or any one of the crocodile documentaries I filmed over the years. You may notice a different reaction. Slow down, man, you pull a hamstring. Because almost, almost, every gator in this pit has been here long enough to realize that I am not going to hurt him. And once that kind of settles in, there is no real motivation to make these huge explosive movements they're so famous for. Every time you see a wild alligator, or a crocodile for that matter, making those explosive movements, that is absolutely exhausting for the animal. These guys are ectothermic or cold-blooded, so they really only have a handful of those moves in them before their bodies begin to build up with lactic acid, and eventually they can barely move. So if these guys all know that the worst possible outcome that could ever happen is me sitting on the back over here for like 10 minutes telling some really bad jokes. It is not worth fighting me all out for the next 15 minutes and then being totally exhausted for the next hour. They don't like me. They obviously don't really dislike me. This is actually a lot like my parents' house around Christmas time. Everybody just kind of tolerates me because they feel obligated. Now I do have a certain rotation system I use to try to make sure each skater only does one show throughout the day. It's actually a jigsaw show, but <laughs> there is no way that's comfortable. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This cannot possibly be comfortable. <laughs> hey, it's not bad. You know, it doesn't look comfortable, but it's not bad. <laughs> I get it. Jigsaw show, show let's go. I just, I'll do it manually. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna be honest, okay? This gator's been dead. This gator's been dead for two weeks. Oh yeah, now you're awake. Don't fight me, son. Listen, you gotta do one show. I gotta do them all. Come on, knucklehead. You gotta do one show. If you tried to bite me, this might look exciting. It's like I'm trying to get my dog in the bathtub. Come on, knucklehead. You gotta do one show. The amount of food you eat, you should be doing five shows a day. Come here, my boy. Come here, baby boy. Yeah, sorry, Zeus. Maybe you should have put a ring on it. I don't really get out much. Now, if you're, get that thing out of here, kid. Now, if you're a Seminole warrior, let's say back in the 1800s, and you're out catching alligators, you're doing that to feed your family. But you always wanted to catch them alive. Alligator meat spoils very quickly in the hot Florida sun. So the first thing they'd want to do is tie the jaws shut. A gator this size has over 2,000 pounds of crushing power per square inch of the jaws. That is enough to crush any bone in your body. Go ahead, show them. Just kidding. Tying the jaws by yourself could be a little challenging. You do need two hands to tie a good knot. And then something has to hold the mouth closed while you're doing that, or you risk losing your fingers in the process. So the Seminoles came up with a technique they now refer to as bulldogging, holding the jaws closed with your chin and your chest. It'll free your hands up, give you time to take out leather or rope and tie a knot. If you want to take a picture, wait till both arms go out to the side, or you see the blood pouring down my throat. It's usually where I tell the kids to just stay in school. <laughs> Okay, take your pictures quickly, please. <laughs> take out a rope, couple of wraps, you tie a knot, and you'd have yourself a caught and tied alligator. Now, look here, what about there? Alligator's brain. Alligator's brain is about the size of my thumb. 
They say there's only one animal in the entire world that has a smaller brain to body size ratio. That, of course, is the alligator wrestler. <laughs> Foolish things like we'll do right now. First trick is called the Florida smile, which is simply opening the alligator's mouth if he lets me. Thank you, sir. He's got 40 teeth on top and 40 teeth on the bottom. If you look in the back of his throat, not done yet, not done. swallow that food. He likes to make it look dangerous sometimes. <laughs> the jigsaw too. Ooh, I like the way you walk, girl. Hey, hey, that must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. It's amazing. Keep out of the water. Yes, I'm going to betray you. You're going to come out here, I'm going to do, do a show with you. Godzilla, come, good boys. He's a good boy. Nothing's free around here, kid. This ain't welfare, this is workfare. Uh, this is a down payment on your show. Come on, good boy, come on. Godzilla, come. Come on. Godzilla, come, let's go. Good boys. He's a good boy. Good boy. Good job. I can do that. Where you go? How fast can they actually really run? About 15? Um, I have old books so they can run 35 miles an hour. Right. And if that was the case, I promise you, the Seminoles with an alligator racing, I would be a jockey right now. Top <laughs> speed is probably about 10 miles an hour. Okay. And it's here to the fence. And right. then it needs eight hours of sleep and a bowl of weeds. Right. And I know they don't sleep before somebody corrects me. It's just a joke. Yeah, I mean, if somebody feeds man. them and you fall in the water, that's when it gets dangerous because they see, a, they see a human and a splash, and that meant food. So when somebody jumps in the water or falls over, they're like, hey, human, splash. Yeah. Or if you're just this deep in the water, you're a duck. What's below the duck? <laughs> Nothing. He doesn't know any better. I've been grabbed by a skinny little eight-footer, even smaller than, uh, than Jigsaw. Maybe as big as Zeus. Maybe even smaller than that. I thought my head was a duck. He grabbed by the shoulder, started shaking the crap out of me. Got a couple of elbows in the throat, and he was like, that's a big duck. <laughs> Any truth to turning them upside down and they fall asleep? They don't fall asleep. It causes, I, I've heard different reasons as to why. It's almost like tonic immobility on a shark. We used to grab sharks as they swim by by the tail of spear fishermen. And they grab by the tail and rotate and they jump upside down and kind of knock it out. And you can hold them like baby upside down. It's the coolest thing. Uh, and gators are going to have that same thing. And uh, they, they would like tickle the belly to wake them up or they would you know, flip them over. It doesn't make them fall asleep. They're there, and they, if you put them upside down, they'll lay there for I don't know how long. But if you yell F O O D, he will snap out of that little trance he's in and get up and start running.
you, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. If you did like what you saw, please hit that like button. We'd also greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell for notification of future videos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.